Hello. Those of you who are at home are invited right now to take a moment and bring a candle to the area of your home that you're using for a uh, service area today. Thank you. And good evening to all of you who are here with us. It's so nice to see you. I'm Andy Kramer. I'm a member of the Sunday Services Committee. And sometimes our services fall outside that realm, and today is such a celebration. It's not Sunday today. As we embark on the season of coming light, we welcome all who gather here with us on Christmas Eve, whether family, friends, or newcomers, all searching for the true spirit of Christmas. As a UU congregation, we're guided by six sources from which we draw inspiration for our own actions. We are moved by the words and the deeds of prophetic people that direct our instincts in our ethical and spiritual lives. The world's great religions are such sources, encouraging our own loving actions and kindness in the world. We seek to acknowledge the inherent worth and dignity of every person and to affect respect for the interconnected web of all existence. Tonight, we teeter here on the cusp of a time celebrated as Jesus' birth, a man so respected that a world religion eventually evolved in his name. And although he did not seek to found a religion, nor did he elicit didactic actions from his followers, thus proving loyalty to and love for him, it is perhaps all the more appropriate for us to admire and acknowledge his guidance in an imperfect world. And tonight, it is indeed appropriate to sing out, O oh, little town of Bethlehem, and wrap ourselves in the light and the love of Jesus' teachings. Many ask, well, was his birth a miracle? And I ask, does it really matter if there was a virgin birth? Must the proclaimed miracles of his teachings have actually occurred, just as reported in the New Testament, in order to carry meaning for us? Must he be the only son of God to be worthy of our admiration and respect? Can parables serve purpose without such a belief? If the story of loaves and fishes is an allegory, for example, does the message lose its value? If Jesus' purported walk on water was only a momentary perception, well, what can we draw from that story? For us to be influenced by Jesus, to be motivated by the love as he did in word and deed, must we also believe in these miracles? Or can we see that in his words and actions, he was pointing followers to respect and dignify all, regardless of lot in life? As we seek and yearn for interconnections, to incubate and grow love in our world, would he not be a worthy model for us to follow? Perhaps in the end, all of life is such a miracle that it's an injustice if we are not aroused and emboldened to turn our own light outward as Jesus did. He was not an idle believer in love or a person passing incidentally in the light. His wisdom continues to light this world. And in this season of growing light, may we carry this inspiration on Christmas and in all the days to come. And now we'll listen to Moonlight Snowflakes 
performed by Amanda Manciardi, Nan Worthington, and Reverend Alex. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Christmas greetings to all who join us on this Christmas Eve night as we gather around to hear the familiar story, to sing some cozy Christmas classics, and to share in the warmth and glow of candles once again. We gather together to rekindle hope in what the spirit of Christmas offers, that in a world marked by tragedy, pain, sorrow, and loss, there is always a hope that these pains will not endure forever. That on any night, the life and promise of a baby born in a manger, born to a refugee family fleeing persecution, and born in a world where we do not fully love our neighbors as ourselves. The promise is that on any night like this night, the hope found in each child reminds us of our own ways of living, beloved, of transforming our broken and hurting world for the better. So tonight, We will hear the familiar story once again with readings from Luke's Gospel that foretell the announcement and birth of Jesus. A reminder for those of you online to grab a candle and something to light it with if you haven't done so already, and those of you gathered should have a candle, I hope, as you walked in. You will need this as we light our candles together later in our service. So as we gather to hear this age-old story this Christmas Eve night, hear these opening words from the Reverend Maureen Killeran. No one is ever really ready for Christmas. 
If we were really all prepared, if every gift we had contemplated had been obtained, if every present was beautifully beribboned, if all the goodies our friends deserve were baked and cooled and stored just so, if each and every person we love was gathered for our celebration, if we never snapped at someone we cared about, nor stopped short of being all that we ever could be, if our minds were 100% loving and our hearts were 100% generous, then truly we would be ready. And truly, we would not need Christmas quite so much. So come, Christmas, most needed of seasons. Come with the reminder that love does not depend on perfection, but on willingness to risk connection. Come into the unready manger of our hearts that we may feel the warmth of new life and give flesh to the promise of hope that cries to bring healing into our world. Come Christmas, come love, come hope, be born in our unready hearts on this silent and holy night. As we start our Christmas Eve service, we also light our chalice, the symbol of Unitarian Universalism, and a flame that reminds us that each person is loved and beloved beyond belief. This rising flame tonight might remind us of that eastern star in the sky, a beacon beckoning for all to gather round to celebrate the birth of a baby boy. For Christians among us, we gather round to celebrate the Christ, the Messiah who is born, who shows us a new way of radically living for one another and loving even those who are the most different from ourselves. I'll invite Andy to now light our chalice as I share these chalice lighting words. In moments when we can see the light, our hearts are open to all creation and possibilities. A reflection by Mark Nepo suggests that in such moments we become one with what we see and that this sudden oneness is what the faithful of all paths have called love. Come, enter the light. So please rise and join now in singing Angels We Have Heard on High.
we will hear our first reading tonight from Bill Hislop. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. We will now hear the familiar Christmas tune, I Saw Three Ships, performed by Marianne Rivers. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. And with this image of a child wrapped in bands of cloth, we will now hear Yesu Bambino, performed by Nan Worthington, Chris Hammerberg, and Barbara Young.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and all they had seen as it had been told to them. And we will now hear a favorite hymn of the congregation, For So the Children Come, performed by the UUCGT Vocal Ensemble and Barbara Young.
O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come within as love to dwell. A ninth century hymn in Latin, this English translation of this famous Advent hymn, with some lyrics from our own UU hymnal, speaks to what brings us together this Christmas Eve night. We come with the anticipated arrival of Emmanuel, a word from the Hebrew Bible meaning God is with us. Or for those of you less theistically inclined, love is still present here. In the Hebrew Bible itself, the word Emmanuel points not to an actual person, but instead a sign of God's faithful love and protection. The prophet Isaiah, who this hymn draws from, spoke to a sign that would come in the birth of a child to a young woman, that this child would be born and named Emmanuel. Indeed, the birth of a child is a cause for celebration, an affirmation that, yes, love is still present here, even in the midst of a troubled and volatile world. Each night a child is born is a holy night. Perhaps this is why each year we gather to share the story of Jesus' birth, no matter if we believe if it actually really happened or whether we think the miracles were even real or plausible. For some reason, this story is one that brings us back together again and again, one that instills a hope that, come what may, there is still a present hope for us amidst this hurting world. That even in the most desperate of circumstances, hope is born in a world not yet made ready for its arrival. As Christmas concludes this season of Advent, this season of spiritual preparation and expectation for the birth of Jesus, I'm wondering how many of us are actually feeling ready for this moment. How ready are we for this great hope of Christmas? For myself and for this community, I can speak to how challenging things have been as we approach almost two years of a pandemic. For this congregation, we are thrilled to share a Christmas Eve both in person and online after so many long months of being apart. Though this still is a time of challenge, for all of us, with our current limited capacity for attendance and with the more variants on the rise. With the over 800,000 deaths due to COVID-19 this year, it feels like we are in a world that is not yet ready for this arrival. And yet, what Christmas teaches us is that we are never truly ready. That hope, when we least expect it and when we are the least bit ready for it, somehow meets us face to face. As our opening words suggest, no one ever is really ready for Christmas. If we were really all prepared, then truly we would be ready. And truly, we would not need Christmas quite so much. Imagine the unreadiness of the shepherds in their fields, a job of modest means, as they are greeted by an angel and told that a child is born on this night, one who is to be the Messiah. How terrified they were when the heavens opened up and proclaimed this arrival. Imagine the unreadiness of Mary as she is told that she is to bear a child, one that would be called the Son of God, an unmarried woman pledged to a man unwedded and suddenly now with child. Perhaps like Mary and the shepherds, we too are not yet ready for this arrival. 
And yet, maybe we're ready just enough in our own unreadiness. That we and the world will never quite be ready or perfect for such an arrival of such good news. As Unitarian Universalists, we turn to Christianity as one of our rich sources. Our historic traditions of Unitarianism and Universalism emerged from Christianity and formed our present faith that exists beyond the bounds of any single truth or way of knowing. A Universalist reading of Christmas is to believe that every heart is ready, despite as unready as our hearts may feel. A universalist understanding of this hope is that no matter what we believe about God or Jesus or the feasibility of all of these miracles, that we can affirm and believe that love indeed has come again to dwell. We simply need to open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts to it. And in doing this, we might experience the wonder and mystery of something beyond just the familiar Bible story beyond flickering flames and hymns. We might experience the promise of Emmanuel, that love is, in fact, still present here, now and especially when we need it most. As Emmanuel comes again to dwell this Christmas Eve, may you feel held in the light of this glorious gathering. May this gathering, as the lyrics say, disperse the gloomy clouds of night and put death's shadows to flight. Let us rejoice in our unreadiness for this season, this promise of hope and renewed faith when our hearts feel all but prepared. And may we somehow greet hope face to face and remember that love is still present here. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come within as love to dwell. Merry Christmas. May it be so. And amen. Please join now in singing All Holy Night.
As you might have gathered, now is the time in our service where we will light our candles. For those of you joining us online, please light your candles now. And for those of you in our sanctuary, we will come and invite you in groups to come forward to the altar to light your candles until all of our candles are lit. As we spread, share, and pass this light, we will sing together, peace, peace, with silent night. Let us now light our candles together.
So as you hold your candle, I hope you'll join me in a meditation on light. As you're holding this candle, let its flame stand for all that you care about most in this life. The people you love, the places you like to be, the work or activities that you do, the ideas and dreams for yourself and for your gift of light. Let the flame of your candle hold all of this, who you are and who you are still yet becoming. Now in this season when the darkness may be even more dark, when the empty place at the table seems even more empty, when struggle is touching many places on our planet tonight, when there are those who this night are without a home, take some time now to hold in your heart all of these who are hurting and whom we have lost. Let them come into your mind's eye and be here with us in spirit so that we may know they are not alone. And now, looking ahead to the new year waiting to be born, let the flame of your candle stand for what you and only you have to give the world. Your presence, your talents, your friendship, your love, your peace, your goodwill. And then ask yourself, is there something in particular that you can bring, this gift of goodwill and love, into the heart of even just one person this year, even if that one person is just yourself. Now, together, let us raise our candles high. Look around at the beauty that we can create together. Here too is a glimpse at the light and peace that Christmas promises. And after you glimpse the potential, the very next step is to let go of it so that we may send it out all of these collective lights into the world. So when you are ready, blow your candle out May their light pour into the coming year. May it be so, and amen. And now, we will extinguish our chalice as I read these words. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above the deep and dreamless sleep, the, starlin the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth, shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. So, in the spirit of covenant, community, and commitment, in the spirit of Christmas and the promise of hope that it brings, may we be made ready to serve one another and to build the world that we so desperately dream of. Our service is now at its end. Thank you for joining us and spending your Christmas Eve with us tonight. As you exit our sanctuary, please return your candles to the basket, unless you'd like to take that candle with you and bring its light out into the world. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. Go in love. Amen. <laughs>